<laughs> Heavenly Father, today we put on the full armor to protect us against attack. We put on the belt of truth to protect against lies and deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations. We put the gospel of peace on our feet to walk in your light, peace, and freedom with the Holy Spirit. We rebuke anxious thoughts. We take up your shield of faith for protection to block and destroy all the darts and threats thrown at us by the enemy. We put on the helmet of salvation to cover our minds and thoughts, reminding us that we are children of a mighty king. We are forgiven, set free, saved by the blood of Jesus. We take up the sword of the spirit, your living word, that has the power to demolish strongholds and is sharper than any double-edged sword. We come to you, Lord, in prayer daily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. What's up, you guys? Welcome to The Imagination. I'm your host, Emma, and today I'm honored to introduce you all to MK Ultra, Super Soldier, Mind Control, and Ritual Abuse Survivor and Whistleblower, Poet, Content Creator, Warrior, and my new friend, Matthew Murray. I met Matthew recently on a Twitter space where there was dialogue happening around the highly public MK Ultra breakdown that professional boxer Ryan Garcia appears to be going through at the current moment. Matthew was given the microphone by the host of that space and began whistleblowing his own MK Ultra testimony. And the depth of information he was sharing was so shocking and on point that I could tell right away that he had an incredible story. So I reached out to him about coming on the podcast and sharing with us. Matthew was born in 1990 to an extremely talented and intelligent woman who excelled at everything she put her mind to. At one point, and unbeknownst to Matthew, he lived in a small town where many of the people around him were and had been used in some form of human experimentation. He believes this was the case with many members of his own family and community. His mother, before passing away when he was a young child, seemed to know Matthew would need defenses against mind control and from a very young age began teaching Matthew ideas and truths that are older than anything we remember in history, such as old ideas his family held onto for generations in secret. Matthew's childhood was filled with trauma after trauma and it would seem that many of the people surrounding Matthew were involved, from being locked away in a room all by himself to endure long school hours alone, to surviving suicide triggers and drugging as an adult. It wouldn't be until recently when Matthew would begin recovering his lost memories and realizing his, his life might be different than he formerly thought. He was sought out specifically for his intelligence to be used in these programs, and now Matthew is using that same intelligence to shake some sense into society about what exactly is going on behind closed doors. Matthew is going to be sharing his testimony today, along with some deep dives into the making of a super soldier and how these abuse systems are actually much more historical and older than any of us would like to believe. When not whistleblowing, Matthew has an awesome TikTok channel where he writes and shares his poetry, and I would encourage you all to go follow along his journey. You are going to hear some new and corroborating information today as Matthew shines a bright light on the darkness, and I ask you all to give him your full attention as he speaks about the things that we were and are never supposed to hear. Before I finish introducing today's guest, I wanted to give just a couple reminders and updates if you'd like to be on the podcast as a guest or share any information privately with me, please email me at imagineabetterworld2020 at gmail.com. You can also use this email if you'd like to be a part of my new book series featuring written survivor testimonies, and you can find the video with all the details on how to submit your testimony on any of my podcast channels. Yeah. And lastly, I'd love your support on Substack where I'm taking up investigative journalism as an outlet for me personally to share about my podcast, the guests, and my advocacy work. And you can subscribe to me there at www.emmacatherine.substack.com. Thank you all for caring so deeply about survivors and whistleblowers and for helping to make the imagination the safest space on the internet for survivor and whistleblower disclosures. So you guys, without further ado, please help me in welcoming today's guest of honor, survivor, overcomer, voice for the voiceless, walking miracle, and another brave male warrior stepping up on the battlefield and speaking truth about the things that matter so we can all come together and make the world a better place for our children. The one, the only, Matthew Murray. Matthew, thank you so much for being here with me today. No problem. Thank you for having me. 
Absolutely. Um, I know that, uh, like I said, we have a lot to cover today. You have some really interesting insights. It's really awesome for me personally to see so many younger survivors waking up and, and wanting to speak out about this. And the stuff that I heard you talking about on that space was absolutely incredible. And I had personally wished that I got to hear you talk longer. So I'm really excited that that I get to hear more of your story today and that we can share this with people. But you are newer to speaking out. You're new to my audience. We're all really excited to get to know you. So I thought if it's okay with you, we would go back in time before you were here and talk about some of the connections that might have set you up to be a potential candidate for something like MKUltra, such as how many generations has abuse gone back, who may have been, been involved and on what side of the family, uh, what occupations did your ancestors, your grandparents and, and parents have, um, and any connections that they have to sort of start filling in these dots. Uh, okay, so basically my family had old religious beliefs now i'm not really sure when exactly they were enslaved i know that my mother was uh chosen in a sense because she was very smart too they, they like to target anybody who has a level of intelligence or physical you know prowess or whatever uh, there's certain reasons for that. People with higher intelligence or better memory retention are better for uh, programming and stuff like that, as it's like a subconscious connection. But um, my mom, I know, she uh, she got into the drugs at a pretty early age, but she was very talented before all that kind of stuff happened. It was just through crime groups, I guess, that were in the area. But a lot of these crime groups, I mean, there's all these religious connections through everything when it comes down to it. I mean, people aren't just their job or you know what I mean? So, you know, she got involved in that kind of stuff. She got addicted to heroin. They did a lot of stuff to her. She was just, for the most part, just a sex slave, although she was intelligent too, so... And she did hold on to a lot of these belief systems as my grandfather taught it to taught it to her. My grandfather taught a bit of it to my uncles too and such, but he didn't really teach the full extent of it to a lot of people. And my mother, she knew more about it than my grandfather did. And when my mother taught me about it, she she taught me about it at such a young age because I had really good memory retention and things like that. So I was I was picking it up just as quick as she was putting it down, you know what I mean? And then I excelled beyond her and the understanding of it too, even. And then, and at a very young age as well. But I mean, the reason why so much attention was brought on to us, because after she had my brother as, after she was, she got pregnant with my brother, they kind of let her go because sometimes when, I mean, they do weird things, these people. They'll make deals with people and things like that, you know. So she got pregnant, and they kind of left her alone. And then she was left alone for a while, and then I was born. and They still kind of left her alone. But then, like I said, I would say things that people would make them think. And there was a certain incident in which got the whole town's attention, in which I my brother was being bullied by these kids who were, my brother's four years older than me. So he was being bullied by kids who were older than him. And there's three of them. And I defended him. So I came up to them and I just basically told them something. And I didn't even really know what I was saying, but it scared the crap out of all three of them. And they left him alone. And then the whole town started talking because what I had told them was something to do with their lives that I shouldn't have known. And it was really messed up stuff that was between their families. And it got the whole town's attention. And everybody started talking. And then that brought all this attention to us. To our family again. All these religious people thought I was a demon. <laughs> Government people thought I was useful. I guess. I mean, it was, there was a lot of conflict going on for a while there. I mean, I did, I kind of got involved in military stuff at a pretty young age. 
I was put into, like I did cold training at the age of about four or five years old. We're literally in like the middle of winter, the coldest day. Me and a bunch of other kids got put outside for the whole day with only t-shirts and pants. We had to figure out how to be warm. <laughs> and we figured it out too. I mean, it was actually kind of fun. I, when I was a kid, I remember having fun doing it for certain reasons. There's a sense of unity and friendship in it as we had to keep each other warm and such. Weird, I guess, but um, I don't know. I mean, then they started uh, doing abuses and stuff. I mean, there was a lot of weird shit that went on. I mean, these people and their religious beliefs, there was some crazy stuff that happened. I mean, there was sexual abuse, too, as we were kids, things that my mother was really against. She tried to stop it all. I mean, they were, they were trying to take control of our everything about our family. They were manipulating everyone, making us turn against each other, drugging us, programming us, doing all sorts of things, you know. Who was it doing that? Hmm? Who was doing that to your family? Just people in the community and around, people who knew about these types of stuff and some of them are religious. Some of them, again, they're just, they're everywhere in certain sense. Some people are just, they seem like the most normal people, but then the stuff that they're doing is just, you know, I don't know. It's crazy. And so you talked but about, um, like... you talked about your, your mother and your grandfather. Was there anything with her mother or, or your father or his parents that you can that you can think um, would trigger anything in relation to any of this or anything important for people to know? Well, most people, especially if you go back in time far enough, they're part of some religious group or another. And a lot of this stuff is very old thinking. So, I mean, there's always some sort of abuse or use or something with a lot of these people. I mean, oddly enough, if you go back far enough, uh, holy water actually used to be these hypnotic, hallucinogenic, amnesic drugs. And they would actually, yeah, that's what they used to use a long time ago. And they would incite religious, uh, you know, whatever, spiritual, you know, things like that. But it was all just, I mean, they would, even back in the day, like armies, they used to just feed armies these drugs because... Well, they controlled the armies and it made them less fearful because they're in these hypnotic states, especially when you train them with these hypnotic states, right? I mean, this is stuff that's so old. It's older than anybody imagines. I mean, making making these drugs is as simple as knowing how to mix a few things together. You know, it's not something very complicated. People have known how to do this stuff for a long time. But uh, these particular drugs have been kept so secret because they are in a sense, religiously connected to these slavers, to these Satanists, so they keep it secret from everyone, so that I mean, it's their greatest weapon, right? Oh, yeah. It's literally their greatest weapon. They, they don't have, I mean, psychological manipulation, spiritual manipulation, all that kind of stuff is part of it too, but without the drugs, most of that stuff isn't near as effective. Absolutely, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And so you think that your family, you might not know exactly, but you suspect that all of them were used for something or another, and they were somehow um, like either abused or programmed or had some type of a history. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, when it came to like the super soldier stuff, I mean, I actually helped develop a lot of the methods that they use, even stuff that they use in secret military today. Like there's, I mean, there was old ideas that they had that were similar but i improved on the model i guess can you talk about sort of your journey uh how did you get into these programs and then let's sort of like talk about that aspect and like how old you were what your childhood uh sort of primed you for and then let's get into how you grew within that and and helped assist with this okay well i mean uh like i said i did cold training uh, there was a lot of other stuff. My mother taught me tons of different perceptional ideas um, using old learning methods. Um, just lots of stuff. But by the time uh, she commits suicide, I was uh, just had turned 
eight. And that's when they started, uh, I guess, training me towards uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, after I moved to where I am now, I mean, I pretty much lived in the same place my whole life after I moved there. Um, but yeah, they did all types of stuff. I mean, isolation started pretty quickly. There was a, there was a couple of years after my mother died in which I was kind of left alone. Uh, in, well, not really, actually, I guess. It's not, geez. Just thinking about stuff. But, um... They kind of left me alone more so, taught me. I mean, that's kind of when they started the military stuff. There's certain things they do, like names, for example. There's these uh, training methods where you, a name has a meaning behind it, basically. And when you understood the meaning of the name on a psychological or conscious level, then you would earn the name. And you would have it programmed into your brain. So it was like a conscious subconscious connection. Now there's like many of these names. Some of them are based in psychological aspects. Others are based in physical aspects, like being able to move in certain ways or do other things like that. Um, it's just ways to associate certain aspects of humanity to a conscious function i guess it's, it's a way to make you think without thinking <laughs> but it's kind of a bastardized idea because using the drugs to do it is actually less effective than learning how to do it without the drugs but uh but yeah they train assassins this way too they i mean there's lots of different things they do that split your mind uh, a conscious part and an unconscious part because when you're under the influence of these hypnotic amnesic drugs they put you in a hypnotic trance with amnesic properties to it so essentially you're not consciously there but your subconscious is still active and all your sensory stuff is active so all your senses work smell taste touch all that stuff and they can program you through physically touching you, abusing you, speaking to you, all these things, it gets programmed in your subconsciousness. And they can twist your personality through that, through traumas, through all types of things. They can train you to be an assassin. They can train you to be soldiers, but it's, it's still kind of ineffective in a lot of ways because of the fact that many of these people are locked in hypnotic cycles. So it doesn't allow for proper uh, problem solving, I guess, when it comes to, you know, intuitive thinking and stuff like that. It's, it's all this very narrow minded focused thinking. So people won't notice certain things or, you know, you can, you can literally program people to not pay attention to certain stuff. It's insane. Yeah. You can do anything, like pretty much anything you can think of because it's all linked to psychology and perception. I mean, if you can figure out a way to, you know, twist it in some sense or another or enhance it. I mean, when it comes to hypnotism, it's a proven fact that you can use hypnotism to improve one's talents, for example. So, I mean, a lot of these people will actually offer to help make people better in so many ways and then as they're making them better in one way or another they're also doing horrible horrible things to them to gain control of the person as well i mean they do this to a lot of celebrities actually uh you know it's it's crazy stuff and it's way more widespread than anyone realizes but uh i mean as it comes to making super soldiers too I mean, I don't know. Or do you want me to talk about more about my family? I don't know. Hey, whatever whatever direction you want to go, we can always come back and, and answer the other questions. So if you if your heart's going somewhere, just go with it. Okay. Well, my brain is just does what it does sometimes. Okay, go with it. Yeah, go with it. But yeah, the, the super soldier stuff is completely based in science. 
psychic stuff based in science. There's scientific explanation for it. It's just ignored by most of the scientific community. And as what, being for people who are like new to that term, what is a super soldier for somebody who might be new to learning? It's <laughs> they're not as special as they're made out to be, but it's just a, a highly intuitive nature based on having advanced calculations in the brain based on having a certain balance of energy and understandings of reality, not only psychological, but physical stuff. So understanding math and, you know, all these types of things are just as important. Having a, a well-rounded understanding of reality is what builds this network in your brain. And then having the intuitive connection through things, as well as having balance of mind, body, and heart, because your heart is actually it's actually an instrument of measurement because the heart creates vibrations when it beats, right? And those beats are connected to a psychology or a thinking, a perception. And if you're able to find a certain peace within yourself, so your heart is calm, it becomes like a tool of measurement for other people's hearts. So if you're calm and they're not, you'll sense their vibrations through their heart and if you're smart enough you can understand the feelings then you can decode what they're thinking things like that but it's even more it's even more intense when it comes down to it i mean there are deeper levels it's it's pretty insane there is layers of energetic synergy you could say based on conscious perception it's the brain waves and they interconnect with other people's brain waves who have similar perception creating synergy which creates health it creates it actually enhances people's brain function too because in a weird sense people actually be able to borrow information from each other <laughs> it's actually pretty like it's insane <laughs> I mean, and people are all, or at least at one point, we're all capable of doing this type of stuff, but great trauma throughout generations has degraded that in our genetic code. I mean, there's still things present there, obviously, like the appendix. I was talking about that in my, my string of posts. It just, it creates special enzymes that allow your body to function at a much more efficient rate so you can eat less and you get way more energy out of it, just way more. Certain en These certain enzymes can turn a small amount of energy into like three or four times the amount of what it is. <laughs> and yeah, it also, it also enhances brain function to the point that is just, it's unbelievable, really. It's people moving in intuitive natures that they don't even have to think about it but they'll always be on the side of making the right decisions i guess you could say it's it's intense i mean the warriors in old times that used to have these abilities were basically unbeatable in fights against anyone who didn't have these abilities because they could just sense a fight in such a way and every movement of the fight in such a way that they couldn't be beaten essentially <laughs> and this is why the military i mean a lot of the stuff is written in old religious texts it's just a lot of it's twisted by slavers over time slavers were never able to achieve these states because they're so egotistical and insane and they're like i said all their power is in the drugs they use which isn't really it's it's a facade of power you know a lot of these people who use these stuff they're not really talented they're not really I mean, some of them are, but a lot of them are just people who know how to manipulate others. You know, that's kind of their whole shtick. <laughs> it's just, you know. But yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff behind it. I mean, when it comes to ritual abuses and stuff like that, they have these weird perceptions about how they can steal energy from people and all this types of stuff, but it doesn't really work the way that they think it does. Most of the time, these people just end up going insane in one way or another, even if they still have their, uh, you know, ducks in a row, you could say. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know. The real power is in unity. It's in peace. It's in, in love. Oddly enough, even if these people are brought to war, it's still for the sense of protection and for justice and for good. You know, these are just very old religious understandings. I mean, there's a lot to understand, to unpack when it comes to why people have the certain perceptions they do. And, you know, even our culture today, tons of it is just a mix. So it, all it is is new twists on old ideas, like everything, you know. But, uh, you, you know, I don't know. And they do taunt people through, like, I mean, when it comes to how electronics work, and these hypnotic drugs, I mean, some of the things these people can do, for example, is drug you, send you home, make you watch a movie, and say, like, at this part of the movie, this idea or whatever, they'll connect it to you somehow psychologically. The program triggers are doing it that way, too. I mean, a lot of the people that are assassins, their triggers are just in TV shows that they'll watch or music they listen to, <laughs> like, just things that are presented to everybody, you know? It's insane. Uh, the way you can program people is just, it's it's too easy. It's just way too easy. And these drugs are so effective too. You actually only need a very, very tiny, tiny amount of it. Like even a drop of certain forms of it, so potent. It's insane. And they can they can literally drug whole water supplies with this stuff, whole whole batches of drinks or food. And it, it's just a tiny little bit they put in there. You barely even know it would know it was in there, and it has a profound effect. Does it have I a mean, name? Does the drug have a name? Well, the best example of these drugs are date rape drugs. These okay. aren't exactly the same because the, a lot of the ones they have are the same thing, but they're a little bit different with twists on them mixed with other drugs, too. They do all types of things. I mean, mixing them with other drugs enhances addictive effects, especially, again, when it comes to trauma or sex even it enhances the addictive effects so why do you have so many sex addicts who are addicted to porn because half of these people are drugged and they watch porn all the time <laughs> it enhances the addictive effects same when it comes to any other drug including marijuana alcohol or even cigarettes like they they can, like they could literally lace anything with it there's even there's even vapor forms of this drug like, you want to know how these, you know what happened in Canada, right? With the uh, standing ovation of the Nazi there, and then everyone was like, what the hell happened? Well, sometimes what they'll do is they will literally go to the central air conditioning system of a building, blast it with these vapor forms, and drug a whole building full of people. And they won't even know what will happen because they'll be put into these automatic functioning like a like a sleepwalk almost so they'll keep doing their daily routines because it was already kind of programmed as they were thinking about their day and doing stuff right some people will just space out things like that they won't notice certain things like it's just it, it's so ridiculous it's so insanely ridiculous when you think about it but uh you know, I don't know. There's so many things. Talk more about the, um, cause I had interrupted you and asked about what a super soldier was and you answered that, but right before that you were going to talk about, uh, I believe going deeper into the programming aspect and some of the things that you have discovered, um, and that you helped with, uh, developing. Well, yeah, the names thing, I was able to improve upon that in a way that, uh, they couldn't before because and what is that well uh, like i said when uh, there would be names that have understandings behind them and you would earn a name when you got the understanding and they would be associated to many aspects of your humanity so the way i was able to improve upon that is basically there was limitations on what people could actually program in their brain because of intelligence and memory and stuff like that. But I kind of found a way to make it so that there could be more by associating these names and understandings with certain areas of the brain. 
creating more splits in a sense, but also creating a network between them. Because there was certain understandings of perception. So then people could be extremely compounded in their brain, but still have an interconnecting network. So they might seem to be one way at one time and another way at, at, at another time. And they could also do this to just program people to do amazing things without really thinking about it, like fighting or dancing or just other types of stuff. Mathematic calculations, for example, you could literally... You could, you could do so much stuff that's positive in a sense, but again, it's extremely dangerous and I wouldn't recommend it because it still has problems and also you're giving yourself over to somebody to allow this to happen and you don't know what they're going to do because, you know, so it's a very dangerous thing. It's always better to just learn how to do these things without these types of drugs. Although these slaver people think that it is the way to do things. <laughs> And with torture, but, uh, right? Torture and drugs. Yeah, well, it's all based on control. And I don't know. They have these other silly ideas about trauma. Prisons and such. Being trapped in obsessive cycles. It's all Satanistic stupid crap. And it's all, it pisses me off because it's so dumb. It's just, I don't know. But, uh. Yeah, when it comes to soldiers, though, there's there's certain things you do. There's other aspects you can do, like, again, depending on how intelligent a person is, you can split their mind into different parts. Like, uh, for example, you can put a, a different personality, in a sense, in each part of your body. So in your arms and your legs. And it's actually, like kind of a good thing to do because i mean not really again without the drugs with the drugs it's kind of a good thing to do but without the drugs you can learn how to do this crap anyway but uh with the drugs is kind of a thing to do because it allows you to move and think in weird ways i guess again with intuitive sense and nature your legs and arms are independent but connected with personality in a sense or consciousness behind them so you can do just very weird things like with you do multi functional things like it's really good for dancing basically or being a soldier because it allows you to fight and move in weird ways i guess you could say or even dance as each limb would be independently doing certain things and such it's a link through the brain and perception, but there's also lots of other things they do because they can split your personality into several different personalities. One will typically be in the light, but then there's always like an intrinsic connection between who you are consciously and who they make you be uh, subconsciously, I guess, or unconsciously. So there's weird little things that will bleed through. Perceptional things like, especially when it comes to triggers and stuff. For example, recovering memory is based on triggers to some degree because triggers are based on association. Recovering your memories are also based on association. So when people say certain words to you and it makes you feel a certain way or think certain things, that can be because of hypnotic triggers. And it's just... Yeah, it's it's crazy. And it's pretty widespread too, like I mean all these like pretty much all the cults, all these cults that are in North America, all these smaller cults, there's thousands of them. Majority of them are just sex slaver cults. They're just made to indoctrinate people into a lifestyle of sex slavery. And a bunch of them are made for other things too, like making assassins or testing people when it comes to conditioning there's tons of different things you can do to people so I mean, that's another thing too is conditioning but uh 
Yeah, I don't know. There's lots of stuff. <laughs> Jeez, Can you talk about things. um some of the conditioning? Uh well, if you ever hear about people being just held and starved, there's reasons for that beyond just uh, imprisonment. Sometimes people will do this like there are examples if you look. People will do it to their kids. They'll starve them and stuff like that. It's because they're trying to condition their bodies to be certain ways and stuff. They're trying to, like, it's it's ridiculous. Starving people, though, there's a reason for it. And conditioning is, is trying to train the body to be more efficient in uh, food consumption, I guess. So it's trying to train the body to get pull more nutrients out of less food. Um. It's not really the way to go about things, though, because it's not based in a proper understanding. Because an actual balance of health is needed to create a proper balanced conditioning, I guess. A lot of people misunderstand these ideas. The reason why they do it, too, is re uh, it's related to religious stuff. It has to do with Jesus. Because uh, Jesus, I mean, if you look at the Catholic religion, Jesus was a real person, by the way. He was a person who was just highly intelligent, highly intuitive. You could say he was one of these super soldiers. Thing is, is he was in a time surrounded by a horrible slaver culture. We know this. <laughs> he was maybe perhaps one of the only people who had achieved that level of balance in that time, which is why he was so focused on. I mean, if you look at the story, too, his mother, she was a virgin who magically got pregnant by God. God is actually a rapist who drugged her. <laughs> you know, this, she, there were sex slaves. Like, his, uh, Jesus' mother was a sex slave, basically. And Jesus was born out of it. Jesus hated the sex slavers because of what they did to his mother. I mean, this is the real story behind it. He... You know, he was involved in, I mean, there was tons of religious stuff back there, too. Basically, he did damn near everything that is said in the Bible. It's just that a lot of it was twisted after, see, they, they held him up as a savior against slavery, but then the slavers just took over the religion, and they filled the religion with a ton of, a ton of slaver ideals and stuff, the opposite end of the religion, in other, other words, the hell side of it. And, you know, some people will follow one way and other people will follow the other way. And that's how they find victims within their own religion, too. Is They just listen to which people in the religion believe what ideas, more so. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of messed up. It's a slaver religion, but it, is, it, it was based on a person who was against that kind of stuff. Jesus was against slavery. Jesus was against that kind of, you know. But it's like, people just, they're scared to think about their religions in certain ways because they're afraid of, you know, obvious things, I guess. But it's not just, it's not just like Catholicism, for example. Like every religion is filled with slaver ideology. Like every single religion across the planet has some sense of slaver ide ideology in it because slavers infiltrated everything. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I don't know. But yeah, uh, it's crazy, crazy stuff. It is. And it's, it is interesting to me, just like hearing different versions of history, because for one, like we know, regardless of like what, narrative we align with what they told us is wrong like we know that you know nobody yeah. needs to guess that like our history is altered like we we all know that if you're watching the show like you know that to some degree you know so like yeah. blindly trusting stuff like there's a lot of questions that I have about things too you know and it's like a lot of people you're right like they they're kind of scared to like ask those questions and be curious where for me I think the more that we dig into that like the more we find out these undertones that like we're always given some information that's true. It's just like you said, it's inverted somehow. Stuff is left out. A lot of times really important yeah. things. And so we get a version of the story that is similar and uh, like based off, 
but we don't have all the information a lot of times for any narrative to like construct a whole story, you know? And I think if we look deeper, we would see so much more of our history is rooted in, you know, especially child slavery, you know, and con the control of the mind, like who yeah. gets the, this technology that's out there, who gets this, the, this old occultic knowledge of, you know, fracturing the brain, like, where is that going? Who gets to sort of hold on to that electricity? Like, there's a lot of like esoteric and like, uh, you know, just old school knowledge that really has been used for generations and generations, eons and eons, millennia and millennia, you know, and, yeah, and it's yeah. evolved and it looks different and it might be called something different now. But it's like, we we're so used to the new terminology and like the evolution that like, we don't understand the past because we don't want to go there. We just want to sort of yeah. soak everything in as we're told today. And it's like, no, like we can learn so much if we go back in history and like reanalyze what they've told us and figure out the truth while coming together and like putting our two cents into it instead of just accepting a narrative that we're given or just, you know, blindly thinking that perhaps things that were shown have zero modification through time. Like they modify everything and they take stuff yeah. out, you know? Yeah. Well, the one thing I always say is it's not necessarily the words that are said, but more the intention behind them. So, I mean, the words can be translated into anything, could mean anything, could be anything really, if we put the idea behind it, right? So the truth behind any word is the consciousness that says it. If you know what I mean. Yes, absolutely. And that's such a good point. And it's fascinating to you hearing about um, some of this more evolved like programming and conditioning. Because here's something that for me, I think what you're saying is really valuable because there have been a lot of uh, older survivors that have come forth that, you know, were brought into MKUltra in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah. And they're well, now Vietnam. sharing, yeah. but like they've even said this has evolved, you know, and I like you were born in 1990, you know, and like to hear how, like what you've seen change. I'd love for you, if there's more stuff you can talk about with that, I think that's like a missing piece that, you know, we're offered how it used to be. And there's not a lot of people talking about like where it's at now. Like, how has it evolved? Like, what are kids today going yeah. to potentially? Well, the culture today is, most of it is just meant to divide everybody on every level. Like <laughs> parents from their children's husbands from their wives, like, you know, <laughs> every race against each other, every culture against each other, every religion against each other, down to ideologies as simple as like certain business ethics. It, like it's just everything in culture in one way or another is meant to divide people on a psychological aspect. I mean, you know, what's really funny is another part of making a super soldier, as I said, was having uh, a, a well-rounded understanding of everything in reality. Now, people would say, how could you do that? It's difficult enough to specialize in one aspect of knowledge. But the interesting thing is, is the reason why it's so difficult to specialize in one aspect of knowledge is because you're specializing in that one aspect of knowledge. There are intrinsic connections between all aspects of knowledge. So as you learn them all together, it actually becomes easier to learn them all because there's intrinsic connections between them in which you can make associations. It actually makes it easier to learn more things than it is to learn a focused path because there's all these disconnections. It makes it harder to understand certain aspects. So when it comes to how our society is built and we are focusing on specialized aspects of things, we misunderstand each other all the time because there's all these disconnections in perception. And it's like, you know, the whole world is, it's, it's so stupid. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the stuff they do, I mean, everything on TV and in music is all meant to incite some sort of ego, sense of ego, or, you know, I mean, there are a lot of, the, the reason why there's so many things like love songs and stuff is because they love to target families and break them. I mean, most love songs are about breaking up. <laughs> you know, it's to incite sadness when these things happen because of disconnections in perception. 
I mean, even the ideals of men versus women, for example, is just completely asinine. And most of it comes from old thinking too, slaver thinking, which is the man is always dominating the woman. It's sex slaver thinking, the ideology of sex slavers that the man should control the woman. Like the beliefs that I have and the ideas that my ancestors held on to for so many generations, women were actually typically the ones who led things because they were more empathetic. They had more connection to the psych psychic realm, I guess, than men did. So they were typically more smart. They wouldn't seek war. They would try to seek peace. They were, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and again, this wasn't that men weren't involved in things back then because they were. There was a, a balance between them. It was a unity of cooperation and understanding of empathy that they were two sides to the same mirror in a sense, you know what I mean? That they, they needed to find a unity and a connection of cooperation like one would find within themselves. It's not like ego is an asinine idea. It makes no sense. Like these slavers have this idea about there being a human consciousness essentially that is God and is controlling everything. And this is the most delusional stupid perception ever because if you actually understand certain aspects of reality if you were actually god or any individual is actually god they would just purely go insane <laughs> it's that simple because basically the burden of being god would be so overwhelming that it would just crush them <laughs> it's that simple like the whole idea of god is another twist on reality because god the word god the original meaning of it was just the undeniable truth it had nothing to do with some being that controlled reality because it doesn't make any sense there's nothing about it that makes any sense if you think about it i mean if you're a god and you control everything you're omnipotent you're eternal so basically that means there's no mysteries, there's no puzzles, there's no challenge to anything. There's no, um, uh, what is it, like peer or, or, or there's no equal to you. This makes you a very lonely, <laughs> it makes you imprisoned essentially. Like the idea of a God is still imprisonment. You're imprisoned in your perfection. You know what I mean? It literally makes no sense. It's as stupid as stupid can be. And yeah, it's just another slaver tactic. Like they say God because they want to drug you and claim that they are God to have control over you and have you listen to them. You know what I mean? God is the master. God is the father. The You must listen to the father or you'll be punished by wrath. And it's, it's literally slaver ideology. It's just, <laughs> it's silly. When it comes to the truth of things in that sense, reality is a unity based in conscious connecting ideals, like intrinsic connections between everything. I mean, that's literally what is holding all of reality together is intrinsic connections between all these functions, these systems. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, heaven, it's its a real place. I called it the gray fox, but that's not, I mean, that's just a name for it. But its it's just like, it's a, I guess you could say it's a consciousness that exists beyond life that kind of floats in the background. And everybody's connected to it in a sense, one way or another. I mean, the funny thing is, is people will say like, like, is reality an illusion, for example? Or is it a simulation? Or is it a dream? Is it a drug trip? If you've heard that one before. But the funny thing about it is all these ideas, they're just feedback loops. They're, <laughs> because the funny thing about it is, like, if life was a simulation, what would you wake up to? And then the question beyond that is, what would you wake up to? And what would you wake up to? And what would you wake up to? It becomes a feedback loop. That's how you know reality isn't a simulation. It's not a dream. 
It's not a drug trip. It's not any of those things. They're all related in a sense. The idea of a paradise or like a heaven that is perfection is a lie because again, being trapped in perfection is a prison within itself. The actual heaven is not exactly perfection, but it is close to, and, you know, it's like, there's these weird, so many weird things. I mean, you can literally go on for just, just for days when it comes down to it, but. Well, I get really fascinated hearing different points of view because I, I have my own personal beliefs, you know, but like I'm so curious on what other people think because I like hearing other aspects of the world that I wasn't exposed to so I can add things to my toolbox or expand on my perceptions, you know, so for anybody who is listening, who is religious or who, you know, has beliefs that are different just take everything in, you know, take it as information. I think we're really quick to react and like we push off having conversations. It that, can like, be, it that can differ. be scary ideas. Well, it is. And I think like we can, it's really easy to take things personally and to just like uh, get angry and like want to push it away where I think like, I like to lean more into things that are slightly uncomfortable or like different than what I believe just because it helps me like, you're not the only one who has these beliefs and who these experiences. And so we need to be aware of like just what else is out there, like potentials, you know, what else is sort of like out outside of uh, our, our realm of thinking that we can take in and, and, and recognize as a reality, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that I, I appreciate you sharing because I know that like, this is kind of like a, a, a tough topic sometimes to talk about uh, publicly, but I really think like the, if there's one thing that this podcast has challenged me on, it's, it's obliterated everything I knew about my life, about this world. And if I would have just shut out everything out that I, that went against my belief system, like I wouldn't have this podcast. Like that's the whole point is to like invite all of these different perspectives in and, and add it to a toolbox and say, I don't have to adapt everything a hundred percent to my belief, but like realizing a potential reality and all these different potentials that create the, the world that we live in, you know, like it's, it helps us put together a piece of like, this astral puzzle in a sense that we can't see with our eyes, you know, and it's something that, that we, that we have to hold on to in our hearts and perceive like how you said with senses, with intuition, um, with, uh, practice even, you know, it's not something that we can see. So like just kind of getting a, a bigger toolbox, I think, and like expanding on these perceptions, I think like that's, we should all be doing it because especially a lot of people get so sucked into like these little tiny sects of, of religion, you know, and they block out so many more amazing, uh, you know, lessons and things to learn that could help grow them spiritually with whatever their focus is, you know, but it's like you said, if you focus on one thing, it can be more difficult sometimes than, than letting yourself expand. And I found like the more that I just let that go with myself and just be like, I'm just going to learn as much as I can about whatever is told to me, you know, and just take it all in. Like it's really helped me put together a better understanding of the world that I live in. And like, I didn't have to go dig into all this stuff individually. Like it's come at me as like a big picture, you know? So I appreciate you just, you know, helping us understand your, your perceptions of stuff and like genuinely, ex genuinely sharing from your own experiences, like what you have personally learned going through what you did. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, a lot of the conditioning I went through really, they, they really tried to twist my mind a lot when I was a kid to make me think like them through traumatic stuff. I mean, I was such a, I mean, I was so against their ideals. They really liked to pick on me for that. So anyone I cared about, they would target and let me know what they were doing to them and also they would also, uh, you know, they would uh, make deals with me. They would say, if you don't do this, we're going to hurt this person. So some of these things that they made me do are just psychological tortures uh, to myself for a lot of reasons. I went through so many years of that, like over 
over 20 years, I would say. And then half the time they would end up hurting the person anyways. So it was pointless, but you know, sometimes they wouldn't, but Can I you know, ask they, you, where where would your abuse mostly occur? Was this like at the school? Would they take you off site somewhere or maybe a mix? No, like nobody would mess with me. Nobody would. <laughs> I was. So where would they, where would your programming take place at? At home, usually. Okay. Um, in isolation most of the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there was a lot of people. I mean, these people have religion, like they, like I said, they have all these religious beliefs, and like I said, I was able to know things. So a lot of these people, they saw me as something I wasn't, and they like people had respect for me, but everybody kept a distance, you know. And it was, you know, it's just a weird, weird situation. I don't know. But there's, you know, I don't know, a lot of people, a lot of people came to trust me and really respect me for other reasons, because I would always tell the truth. Everybody else would be lying all the time. And I would be telling everybody the truth. And everybody saw this. And I'm the only person telling anybody the truth. So a lot of people, they respect me from a distance. And they, there's a reason why they woke me up. So I could tell people this stuff. <laughs> Literally. Like... Because, like I said, I gained a lot of respect for these people. A lot of them started turning against their own beliefs, I guess. I mean, some of them are still, it's, it's a pretty shaky situation in a sense, but nobody's doing anything, so. Yeah. Talk more about, um, so what has evolved? Uh, you you did an awesome job explaining some of the evolutions on sort of a big picture scale and like how children these days are being affected just to, in general how society is what about yeah. any actual programs you had mentioned because essentially what how they programmed people back in the 50s is very different than how maybe you were in the the 90s 2000s depending on how long you know they they were experimenting on you um what were some of the ways that you saw change maybe with technology or what were some of the i guess I hate saying upgrades because this is all just so horrible, but like what were some ways that I guess this this was improved or uh, changed throughout maybe the generations that that you might have been exposed to? The actual um, well, a lot of it hasn't really changed, honestly. It's just that a lot of it is kept in secret. So people don't know, you know, if it's changed or not kind of thing, but when it comes to a lot of the programming, oddly enough, it's just done within people's homes by their own parents even. Sometimes in bad ways or good ways, but other places do it too. I mean, certain schools, churches, cults, they try to indoctrinate people. The military has facets of this in them. So some of the people who are being brought into the military are being brought in specifically by these slavers. You know, not all the people. There's lots of people in the military, good people, who are just victims of this kind of stuff too. You know, tons of them. Uh, when it comes to like celebrities, idols in a sense, a lot of them have been like some of these slavers, they have titles. I guess one of these titles is called a kingmaker. And it's basically when you find someone who has amazing talent and really good genetic disposition and stuff like that, natural talent, memory, intelligence, all that kind of stuff. And then they program them and they turn them into their celebrity puppet. I mean, a lot of the celebrities that are across America, they're just, they're literally the kings that were created by slavers. <laughs> like, and a lot of them aren't even, again, a lot of them are just victims of horrible shit, like Britney Spears, for example. I mean, wonder why she acts so crazy all the time. Why does she do all that stuff? Oh, because they're drugging her and doing fucked up shit to her in secret that she can't tell nobody about because nobody's going to believe her because of all this crap. Not only that, but she's surrounded by these people who are just twisted and sick. And this is true for a lot of celebrities. You've seen so many celebrities over the years. It's like Michael Jackson. 
all the pedophile stuff. I mean, he didn't want to do any of that shit. They're fucking drugging him, force, trying to force him into these situations. Like the people who are really against doing the horrible stuff to people, they torture them badly. And they torture them specifically in the ways that they don't want to be tortured. You know what I mean? So Michael Jackson didn't want to do anything to kids, but they torture him. They, they make him go against his morals and his wills purposely to traumatize and to, you know, so many other reasons to control to not only that, but then they can publicly go out and be like, oh, look at what he did. <laughs> all the surgery stuff, that was all to like turning him white. That was all, you know, <laughs> it's all shit to fuck with people's heads in the culture. Like, and his head, you know what I mean? Specifically, like, look at how many other celebrities, like there's so many of them, just so many. It's, it's insane. And, you know, there's some of them are bad because they've been twisted in such a certain way that they decide to be that kind of person, you know? Some of them just are horribly, they're just stuck there. They're talented people who have a lot of influence behind them, and they're not going to let them go, though. They might kill them, you know, in the public eye or something like that, or, you know, destroy their name one way or another. I mean, it's easy as easy can be to frame somebody with these drugs not only that but take over their whole lives especially today i mean you just drug somebody get them to put their passcode into the phone which you can do through these hypnotic trances as there's subconscious connections and stuff like that then you just literally take over all their bank accounts take over like <laughs> is everything i mean most of what a hacker does is called social engineering and that involves just personally getting involved with these people in one way or another and figuring out their things. Now, one of the biggest tools in that is just simply drugging them. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's insane. It's, it's so easy for these people to get into anything they want to get into with these drugs, anything. And especially when people don't know that they're there. They don't know that they exist. They'll have these weird deja vus and things like that. I wonder why that's happening. It's because you were doing something well drugged and then you had a flashback to it. You know what I mean? Later on. And you're like, hmm, that's weird. Probably because you're in the same area or in a similar situation, right? It's just, it's insane. And it's so prevalent. It's just, oh God, I don't even want to tell you some of the disgusting things they do. Ugh. There's one thing in particular that they did that really just makes me upset but when I was a kid there was this little girl that I barely even knew I was hanging out with a friend of mine and she was across the street sitting on the curb in front of her grandparents house and she was crying and I remember going up to her and talking to her and all I did I didn't even know this, this girl, but all I did is said, because she said she was scared something bad was going to happen, that her family was fighting. And all I did was said that my name was Raziel, and I was an angel, and that I would protect her for eternity. I was just a kid myself. And it was just, Raziel was the name my mother gave me. And the reason why she gave me that name is because of how smart I was and how I was able to figure out the truth in so many delusions all the time or lies i was really good at just understanding things for what they were so she gave me that name because that name is it means the i mean in a sense i mean raziel is the eyes of god is what it's a religious name but it's an archangel that nobody really knows about but he's the angel of secrets the angel of mysteries the angel of truth and he's the eyes of God, the eyes of truth, in other words. So Raziel knows the truth to all things in reality, essentially. So she gave me that name. So when I was a kid, I just told her, my name's Raziel. And I'm an angel, I'll protect you for eternity. And then I never saw her again for several, several years, until about five years ago when I met this girl. But anyways, I ended up finding out that this girl had been horribly tortured throughout her whole life simply because I had told her 
that I was an angel and that I would protect her for eternity. So they literally tortured her horribly throughout her whole freaking life just because I couldn't be there to protect her. And I didn't even know who the fuck she was. <laughs> like, ugh, it's just disgusting. And the disgusting, I don't even want to get into it. They told me everything that they did to her. And I also got the information from her herself. And not only that, but her brother and other people in her family. So it's literally, it's the most disgusting, depraved shit you could ever imagine. And it makes me very upset, but they've done many more horrible things beyond that, though. That's just one thing in particular that was meant to irk me. But these are the kinds of things they will do to people, though. I'm so sorry. I appreciate you sharing that. It's horrible. Like the stuff that I've been told that has happened, it's like stuff that even if I was given 10 years and I could watch all the scary movies in that 10 years that I wanted and I had to think of like the worst thing possible, like my mind still couldn't think of the things that they actually do. Yeah. Well, it's about as bad as it can get. Ugh. Especially when it comes down to a lot of things. I mean, damn near everything you've probably heard to some degree, I would say, is, is true in one sense or another. I mean, they definitely murder children. They definitely rape children. I mean, doing this stuff to children at young ages in particular is what really twists their minds later on in life. Like, for example, this girl, she probably went through 20 years of this stuff. And they started doing it to her when she was a child. And her family members were involved. Not only that, but they were prostituting her out. Like the family, her own family was prostituting her out. I mean, just, it's as disgusting as it could be. She, she got addicted to drugs. She probably, she almost died eight times from drug overdose, fentanyl, eight different times and survived. And there's only certain reasons why a person would survive something like that eight times. It has to do with perceptions and stuff. She's a smart, healthy, intelligent woman who was just robbed of her life by these sick people simply because I said one thing to a person I barely knew as a child. But it's like, ah, it's just disgusting. And so how do oh go ahead keep talking well yeah they do horrible stuff i mean on the people who are the satanists like on uh, on holy days they'll be doing the most unholy things you can imagine while other people of the same religion will actually be doing good things in their homes you know it's insane i mean i've seen examples of things that would just make a normal person just real with sickness it's disgusting i don't know if you saw one of the posts but they they will like sometimes certain women especially if this woman has a, a good heart or wants to be a good person but is involved with the wrong people they will literally gang up and target this one woman they will drug her consistently this is a ritual they do it's a certain kind of ritual but they will drug this one woman consistently keep drugging her keep drugging her and this will, this will start at a young age too usually teenager could be even younger depending on when these people get a hold of them and they will just rape them they'll rape them and these people will get them addicted to drugs like hard drugs so it starts destroying their body and then these people you know they usually end up homeless in one sense or another then these people will follow them around and rape them wherever they can, even in public sometimes, depending on where they are, they like certain times a day or night, for example. And they will just follow this one person around and just rape them, drug them, rape them, drug them, rape them. And as these people just decline into insanity, I've seen it before, I've seen it. Not only that, but sometimes they will impregnate these women, steal their children for 
who knows what. And then just leave them out on the streets. If you've ever seen women walking around going, where's my baby? Where's my baby? What happened? They stole my kid. I've seen this before. I've seen it. And they're messed up. They're just wired, messed up. Like, there's reasons why people end up this way. And it is not just drug abuse. It's because of all these other traumas. I mean, they, they do this stuff publicly, literally. And they, like, just in the face of good people that are around. I mean, they don't see because they do it at certain times, certain places and such. But it's just, it's disgusting the things they will do. Just, ugh. Oh. You know, and, and, you know, having a family isn't necessarily a good way of, if somebody has a family anyways, is not necessarily a good way of knowing if they're a slave or not. Because some of these slavers literally have families just to blend in with society. But the things that they're teaching their kids who God knows who's what, you know what I mean? They could be either be turning their kids into a slave, which a lot of them do, but other ones will teach their kids to be murderers or you know, just all types of stuff. <laughs> they might indoctrinate some of their kids into slaver ideology. There's actually weird, just weird. Like, I don't even know why these people have these stupid ideas, but they have these certain perceptions in bigger families that are slaver orientated where they try to destroy other parts of their own families through drugging and enslavement. So there'll be like certain families where there's like, people who are doing really well and then there's people who are just suffering and dying in the same family and it's because some of it anyways not all of it some of it is generational and people are just sick from old trauma but sometimes it's a family targeting the other family and actually trying to destroy that branch of it it's just <laughs> because it's the, the thing about this too is they have ideology about trust see like in any healthy network or society or anything like that religion there needs to be trust in order for it to work so their ideology is just all about breaking trust and controlling it because that's how you create all these disruptions and stuff like that so these people like to manipulate those who trust them you know what i mean so sometimes it's in family groups like even between a parent and a child sometimes Or even, you know, even religious groups or, or relationships between students and teachers or, you know, stuff like that. Just, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, give you some ideas. <laughs> no, you're great. I just want to make sure that you're finished talking because um, you're on a good riff uh, talking with all of this. Um yeah. So for you, how long did this go on for you? I know it started really early on. When, uh, I guess like maybe walk us through, like the later parts of your childhood, and you know, sort of how that ended up transpiring later on, um, in your childhood and young adult life. Uh, well, through my teen years, I spent a lot of time in isolation. I lived outside of, sort of outside of the town, on the outskirts of the town that I'm living in now. So, I mean, when I wasn't in school, I basically was just sitting in a room alone all day. That was all through teens, basically from, probably from maybe 10 to around 16. It was just pretty much isolated at home all day, every day. I mean, sometimes I might have a friend come over or something, but we would just be isolated in the room. But, uh, you know, I mean, I did have, like I said, I had some privileges because, well, there's certain reasons why, like, for example, why they wouldn't physically hurt me ever was because not only did that make me not help them when they did that, I would just get really stubborn. And even if they drugged me, they couldn't make me do certain things <laughs> it pissed them off. So they ended up stopped trying to abuse me physically in any ways and started with all the psychological crap. I mean, there are some physical things I've gone through, but not very much, especially in comparison to what a lot of other people go through. 
but uh I forget where I was. What was I talking? <laughs> oh, you're good. We were sort of talking about later on in childhood, I guess like 10 to 16, um, some of your journey uh, after the the younger childhood days. Yeah, well, that's another interesting thing too, is if, like, if you look at my grades, usually they would drug me whenever I would go to school. So my grades are just awful, but it's... <laughs> It was all part of keeping me isolated, though, and not having attention on me, all that kind of stuff, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of really weird stuff about my life, if you look at it, just things that don't really fit, they don't make sense, especially if you look at how things are normally done with people. There's, there's just, also with how talented I am, I mean, I've never taken a martial arts class or a dance class um, in my life, yet I can dance pretty much every culture's dance on the planet, if I have the right music. Yeah. And as for like martial arts and stuff like that, uh, I mean, I wasn't really trained to fight people. I was trained to kill them as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> and in the most efficient way. So, I mean, I'm not really uh, like a pit fighter. I wouldn't be a boxer or something like that. But if, if, like, I know how to, basically, I know how to murder somebody in many, many, many different ways very, very quickly. So, I mean, <laughs> not only that, but just how intelligent I am. I mean, my, ugh, just so many, like, yeah, nothing about my life officially makes any sense. <laughs> if you look at things it's just it's insane but I mean I, I don't even have I, that five years ago is the first time I was ever really involved in the mental health system I guess so I went to the age of 28 without having a job and without any mental disorders or drug additions or anything like that and I was just in isolation almost that whole time. I mean, there were there were points in which there were people around. Like I've I've had like girlfriends, I guess. I've had a few girlfriends. Just well, not a, like I've had three girlfriends, I guess. And most of the relationships were pretty long term. But at the same time, it was in certain manipulations. I mean, these people are sex slavers. They just get somebody and bring them to you. <laughs> so you know but not that these women were bad women either they, a lot of them are just victims of stuff too but uh you know so I've had relationships I mean I've had a five year long relationship a three year long relationship and the one relationship was maybe about six months so I've had three say, partners I guess you could say but uh you know, I don't know. What was I saying again before that? No, you're good. You're doing awesome. I know that these stories can kind of skip around a little bit. Um, we are sort yeah. of uh venturing off into talking about more of your childhood and kind of like the evolution of um, I guess where it started, which was young childhood and then sort of continuing on into the older childhood, young adult years. Yeah. Um Hmm. Well, I mean, like I said, I've never had any addiction problems or anything like that. I don't really have any psychological issues. I mean, even in being involved in the mental health system like I have in the last five years, I still don't take meds. I don't, you know, and they don't lock me up or anything. I mean, more than sane enough, and they know that. They try to screw with me all the time, but I'm too smart for them, so... <laughs> They can't really hold me down with anything. They try, they've tried to, but they they're stupid, so it doesn't really work. <laughs> so how long did this go on in your life? Did you you mentioned like isolation and stuff like that, like in your like getting a little bit older? Did that continue or like how well it got worse after I was out of school because at that point, like 
all my friends, for example, they all moved away from where I live. It's a small town, right? They all went to different places. I was kept here after they left. So, I mean, when, when I got out of school, I mean, that's when the real isolation started. That was literally, there was a five year long period where, I mean, there was points of times where I didn't even know what month it was. I had no clue what month it was. I would be up like asleep awake. I mean, I don't even know some of the things I might've done. I mean, certain periods of time, they, like five years was that point. And to me, it, consciously, it probably only seemed like about two. So, I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know some of the things. I do know that they weren't able to make me do anything I didn't want to do. I know that. So they weren't able to make me hurt anybody that didn't deserve it or things like that. But I mean, they they may have made me hurt people who did deserve it, but also that person probably, like the people who are making me hurt that person are probably just as bad as the person I was hurting. <laughs> if you know what I mean, but. Like two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. Pardon? I said, were you saying sort of like two wrongs don't make a right? Like they're trying to, it's just like toxicity on yeah, both. Yeah, like They're both yeah. wrong. Yeah. This, yeah, basically. But, you know, helping the, the wrong people for the right reasons, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's a good way to put or it. Or maybe the wrong people for the wrong reasons. I don't know. Yeah. But there's just, I don't know, there's big blank spots in certain parts of my life. And, um, yeah, that five years went by. After that five years, that's when I got into my first relationship. I was at, I was basically 23 years old. That was the first relationship I ever had. Before that, I was just kept in isolation away from everyone. Oh my gosh. And then that relationship was three years. Then I was kept in isolation for about two more years to 28, 26 to 28. And then, well, I had a, like, I had a six month long relationship in that two years. But then um, after that, I had the five year long relationship and it was with that one girl I told you about that they introduced me to. So, yeah. But yeah, the isolation is just, I don't know, they do, there's lots of reasons for it. One, for trying to make certain, I mean, they're trying to, I mean, it was kind of their test subject, their, kind of their main test subject for a super soldier, I guess, because I was one of the best successes they had. They They have had other successes with other people. But... The thing is, is a, a lot of the ability for the super soldiers to actually be successful is having a peaceful mind, not a traumatized one or a twisted one. So a lot of the people they test this stuff on, they use drugs to try and push it too, to make it happen more. Because, I mean, the, the actual function is in the appendix, which isn't useful anymore. So they try to replace that with certain drugs that have similar effects, except most of the time it just doesn't work. People who have two twisted perceptions, they'll just lose their minds. The, real, the reason why is because it'll create connections and they'll be in their psychotic. You know what I mean? It just drives them insane, basically, because there's too much perception about what they are. So the only people who can really do it are people who have, they're peaceful people. They're the only ones who can really do this superhuman type stuff. So the successes they've had are in people who have more peaceful perceptions that aren't as twisted and traumatized although that's not to say that the ones that lose their minds aren't dangerous because a lot of them will still have their mental faculties but they'll just be purely psychotic so it's a scary situation it is a very scary situation when it comes down to it but yeah i don't know what else <laughs>
when did you remember? When did your memory start coming back from all this? And how was there something that spawned it? Did it come all at once? Like, what was your process of of recovering memories? Uh, it can be a slow process. I only recently recovered this amount of depth to these memories since December. And that's another symbolic thing. Like, I don't know if you noticed, I, I'm 33 years old. My birthday's in December. It was Masonic stupidity, 33 degree Mason bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, those Masons in their math. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The little good old boys club, their little rituals and back, you know, <laughs> little handshakes they do behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know all the little hand gestures and all that kind of crap too pretty much for like any religion like any culture i know like <laughs> it's silly it is hmm? i said it is you're right yeah I know. and so you that's right i remember you telling me that that you i mean like you're super new to like all of it not just you know speaking out but having these memories you know and I think it's like I'm mind blown by you because I've known survivors that woke up 25 years ago and like are just now able to I make know. you know so being like hearing you it's an it's amazing to see like you've come so far so quick you know walk us through yeah, like what there's was reasons when? for that again it's because of my perceptions that's part of the defense that my mother was preparing for me when I was a kid it just has to do with perceptions and locking them into the subconsciousness, it stops people from drugging you into being able to twist your mind because you have the subconscious connection locked in place for a truth or a better perception. It's a difficult thing to do, especially at very young ages, because you need to have a certain level of understanding of things. But like I said, I was like a sponge. My mother was able to teach me it very quickly, and I got it right away, which is why she really focused on me too as a kid. Uh, she stopped doing like everything. She stopped doing work. She stopped doing, she just started homeschooling us. She immediately was just trying to pack my head with as much of this knowledge as she could, as fast as she could before people got their hands on me. So, I mean, it's not that I haven't gone through traumas. It's just that I've been able to cope with them over the years in kind of slow, disconnected manners. And when I woke up, I mean, I already knew for a fact what I was going to be facing, you know what I mean? So I was able to cope with it very quickly, but it's not that I didn't have, like, I definitely had a good month of just trying to put together everything I could in the proper way, because a lot of the times, too, what they'll do when they wake somebody up is they will just fill their heads with all types of nonsense and when the person wakes up, they're just, their heads, you, you're basically sorting through a subconscious puzzle, <laughs> trying to figure out what was true and what wasn't. You know what I mean? So another reason why I'm able to get through it so quick is, is because I'm smart. And I have good coping mechanisms and I understand a lot of stuff. So that's, that's basically the only reason why. I think that's amazing. And so essentially like your mom, bless her because it sounds like she wasn't able to fully protect you. And she obviously wasn't here that long in your life, but it sounds like while she was here, like she, she made a tremendous impact in your life and almost like foresaw all of the challenges that you'd have and helped give you all the weapons that you'd need to like, to, like you said, cope with them and manage them and, and deal with them and heal yeah. from them and understand well, yeah. them. That's why, I mean, actually, the the pain of my mother dying is something I've held on to my whole life. I've never forgotten it, not even once. And it's something that I, I have extreme, extreme empathy for women for so many reasons. Because just oh, women are targeted specifically because they're the mothers. They're, you know it's it's and for other reasons again like i said they're the ones who are more capable of becoming uh psychic or whatever than even over men are like the another interesting thing is uh there is a balance to be attained in health but 
women being as skinny as they are or as less physically inclined is actually more dangerous when trained in certain things like being able to kill somebody as fast as they can with a gun or a knife or whatever because they're more agile they're even they they have to exercise of course and build a, a certain level of health of muscle mass but if they're trained properly properly and they have the intuitive natures behind them they're like the most deadly assassins you could you could imagine they take down the big guys like nothing like, yeah it's insane they're literally like little ninjas <laughs> they'll mess people up it's insane mm. <laughs> but that's why they target women so much because they make the children or the generational cycle or the point of generational cycles more so than, than men are they're the caretakers they're the nurturers that's why they try to take them away or traumatize them so they can't raise their children as well you know what i mean it's all just sick crap it's just ugh. you know i don't know it's nutty stuff it's crazy but it is <laughs> yes and so you've just recently woken up to all this you've been coping really well with it why speak out? Like, why did you go on that space and like start speaking out? Like what, what is your, I guess, motive now? And like, what made you want to, I guess, like, cause here's the thing, right? A lot of people that get out, you're also an anomaly in the sense that like you stayed out. A lot of people get sucked back in. And even though they have the best intentions not to, like they can't overcome that temptation side of it, of all the the ways, the handlers, all the different ways that are utilized to to be weaponized against them to come back in. Like, why did you decide to, like, rebel against it so hard, you know, and, like, start speaking out and, like, what? Walk I've been waiting to do this my whole life. I hate <laughs> these stupid bastards. Seriously. Freaking, <laughs> oh, I've hated them my whole life. My whole life. Just hate these people. I hate them. They're so stupid. Everything about them is so stupid. Everything they believe is just stupid. It's just plain stupid, idiotic dumbassery and it pisses me off not only that but it's just sick i have an extreme amount of empathy for anybody i mean i can literally look at a person and i can just feel like oh this is you can't can't be like me and not feel bad and want to change it because it's just you just understand it too well you know what i mean it's just i don't know I hate these people, though. I hate them. I hate everything they think. I hate everything they're for. They're just idiotic. Ugh. Piss me off. But I don't know. That's why. And I don't know. I just chose the string I chose because I saw a UFO. <laughs> a picture of a spaceship, so I started there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is there anybody, like, because you're still in the area that you grew up in, like, do people there know that you're rebelling against? And, like, what's been your process of, like... Yeah, nobody, I mean, like I said, there's people here, like, I've been here a very long time. And people are, they trust me because I, I don't lie. And it's caused a lot of problems in this town, even, because because when you don't lie, some people find things out about other people, and then... You know what I mean? But a lot of people are appreciative of the fact that I don't lie. So there's conflict here, but I mean, the way things are done, it's it's weird. Nobody, nobody says anything. Nobody wants to speak the truth. Everybody's all about lying and keeping things secret. So, I mean, it's it's a weird, it's a small town. It's a weird little place. I walked on the street. Everybody knows who I am. I don't even know who half of them are. <laughs> it's... You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I don't know. It's not even that, it like, I, I don't want anything to do with these people, but they sure want something to do with me. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what will happen in the future. I mean, right now, I'm not really worrying about anything. I had a little bit of issues, but it hasn't turned any, into anything worse at this point. And I'm pretty sure that it's not going to because... It just wouldn't work out the way they want it to. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It would just be exposing more lies and cracking this thing open more than uh, it might already be. So they're just kind of leaving me alone at this point. Has there been anybody else in that town that since you started speaking out, has there been anybody else that has been like, oh, me too? Not, well, not on the internet, not on the internet, but there are people who, uh, there's people who are in town who they let me know, you know, through like, well, hand signals and things like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's, it's a conflict. There's like half the town is for it and half the town is against it. I don't know. But they woke me up anyways, so... I hope that your courage helps other people corroborate and be like, I'm going to stand up with you. Like, this is messed up. You know, I went through it too. And, you know, the more people that can, like it's, it takes somebody like you to do it first. And it's so crappy that like you have to, because like I said, like nobody who's up here talking about this stuff wants to. And like, it's so insane to me that people will attack somebody like you or others yeah. of ours. Cause I'm like, they were literally chosen because they're brilliant. Like that's part of why they were chosen for this because they are so intelligent. Like you can't go listen to this person talk and tell me that like they're crazy. Like all you have to do is listen to yeah. them for five minutes and hear that they are insanely smart, that they are insanely intelligent. They think on such high levels. Like it's so obvious, you know what I mean? But it's funny mm -hmm. how people like won't listen. You know, society has trained us to like, not listen oh. to survivors and whistleblowers because they're not featured There's on the news. There's lots of reasons for that too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons is that people who know about it just don't want people to know. So if they see somebody and they know it's involved, they're obviously going to start jabbing at them in one sense or another, trying to pull out some sort of fallacy in the thinking. Or but you're crazy, you know. You know. And then, you know, also a lot of people are just ignorant to the truth of things. They just think, no, that can't be possible. That's just... It's just far beyond what's possible. It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But... Yeah, that it, that is hard for a lot of people. You know, even in that space that we were in, you were starting to talk about like some of the, you know, martial arts conditioning and somebody was sort of like, I do martial arts and like, there's no way things can work that way. And I was like, oh no, like this person is way behind on their, you know, understanding of all of this. It definitely can. Not only that, but people saying you need some sort of official uh, training to know all this stuff. It's like, dude, there's people all over the place that know this stuff and they're working for it. And you don't even know. You don't even know what their motivations are. What are you talking about? This could be done anywhere at any time in any place. People just meet up. 100%. You know, it's, yeah, not that complicated, really. I mean, there's there's weird things that they do for transactions. Like, for example, in certain places, because they don't want it to be official and they don't want it to money trails, what they do to make deals is they will say there will be one guy will give another guy a couch, for example, right? And that couch will be a promise of a future deal through that person's business in the future to make money because they're going to be working anyways is the way they see it. So if they just get more business, that's more money, right? So essentially what they'll do is just give somebody some item as a seal of a promise for business in the future. A legitimate business, but it's, it's a, a way of payment you know what I mean? They, that's just one thing that they do. But there's tons and tons of different things that they do to avoid any sort of paper trails or things like that. I mean, not only laundering money is one thing. I mean, this is there's so many so many ways that they go about transactions and such. And some things are just yeah. You know, when it comes to some of them, like geez they'll sell their own kids to somebody else as a as a seal of a deal if you know what i mean yes it's disgusting but and even like, how, like you mentioned hollywood you know and like that's that's something people still aren't thinking on a higher level about like what you said people are posting photos of you know celebrities doing these like symbols in their photos and they're covering up one eye and they have whatever and i'm like yeah. If a survivor were to come forward and show, and I've seen photos that survivors have sent me of like 
them wearing an article of clothing or there's some a photo behind them that is like super occultic, you know, with symbology. I'm like, we wouldn't go post that on the internet and make fun of them. We would be like, oh my gosh, like look what this poor child was subjected to. But instead, like yeah. we go exploit these celebrities, not only like from the truther end of like, look what this celebrity's doing with their, you know, hand signal, but we're also exploiting them by not understanding that they're a slave and we're paying money to, you know, their owners to watch them perform like a freaking circus yeah. animal. Well, there, there's some of them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just some of them don't even know what the, uh, like, the the people programming them will only give them a certain aspect of what the symbology actually means. Sometimes it has deeper meaning than they actually think, or it has specific meaning towards something that might have happened to them or somebody else. Or, I mean, you can change the symbology of things around depending on a lot of different things. But I mean, there's there's so many things that they do that are just horrible. I mean, one of the one of the methods of intimidation that they use against people is, you know, say there's somebody who is starting to tell the truth about these things, and they don't want them to, so they'll intimidate this person. And one of the ways they might do it is by drugging their whole family and invading their home, uh, kidnapping their kids, or murdering their kids raping their wives or like just terrible things and they'll do it in front of them too and then they'll they'll videotape it and then they'll leave and then these people will all be you know they were all drugged and they'll know to wake up the next day or whatever and they'll feel all weird or whatever if nobody was murdered and then what they might do is like did you see that post i put about those uh sonic weapons that can disrupt your thinking on twitter like they're a real thing it's 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 in one of the it's it's in my uh, on my account. Twitter on the X account. Hmm? On Twitter, right? X, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On X, yeah. But it's it's a sonic weapon, basically, and it can disrupt your thinking. They, it's just a stupid little thing. It's not even really that useful for a lot of stuff, but it is good, in particular, for psychologically manipulating people, and especially people who are stuck in rooms which you know a lot of people these days are stuck in rooms but there are versions of these weapons that can project images and sounds into your head and a lot of the times what they will do is they like i said they'll torture the family or whatever they'll videotape it record it and then when these people are isolated or at home alone they'll project these sounds and things into the person's head and because of you know, things like pattern recognition and the voice recognition in the brain, they'll be able to understand it in their brain, but it'll almost be like a, and it will be an association of memory too, especially if they're present, which allows them to know that the things that they're experiencing actually happened. So they can, like, literally they can, oh, they'll manipulate families, destroy them. They'll do so many horrible things. Like all these, all these, I, all these, you know why relationships don't work anymore? It isn't because men and women are screwed up. It's because these people are screwing up relationships purposely through doing all types of horrible things. Just just insane. And it's not all of them. Of course, there are just screwed up people. But it's, you know what I mean? A lot of these things, they're, they're literally manipulated by the people around them. And again, people who have a good connection or the ones who are targeted the most, which is even more disgusting, like healthy families, healthy relationships, they'll target them because it's a, it's a, it's a occultic ritualistic belief to break that unity and to pervert it somehow. Or, you know what I mean? Like all the pornography everywhere is all part of that. Like if you look at statistically, uh, damn near everybody these days watches pornography. And it's just like, it's so useless and it leads to nothing good and it's literally made to indoctrinate kids into sex slavery like literally you know by creating the addiction that it makes you a willing sex slave because you're addicted to it you know what i mean especially when you throw the hypnotic drugs in there then people just think like literally porn stars what do you think so many porn stars get murdered everybody's on only fans these days it's literally like, you know, and then they also constrict the money flow too to encourage 
women to go into OnlyFans more to make extra money to supplement their incomes because of how hard things are. It is an easy route to make money because pornography is everywhere. It's prolific. And everybody watches it. But many of the people watching it don't realize not only are they victims of drugging and abuse and brainwashing, but the women in these videos are victims of abuse and brainwashing and you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just this horrible, perverse cycle that just, it leads nowhere. It leads nowhere and it has no point other than to make a dollar, which honestly is so freaking pointless in the, in the long run anyways. I mean, how many rich people are out there? They got millions upon billions of dollars and they aren't even spending the money. They're just sitting on it. How the fuck does that help anybody? It's like, start building something start throwing infrastructure start you know start combating slavers for fuck's sake they're all over the society i think you could find some money to do that and it's not to say like elon musk for example i think is definitely pushing for some good things i mean keeping free speech amazing wanting to explore space very good endeavor there's stuff out in space we can go to space it's possible it's a possibility. There's some things to it, but it's possible. And I know about some of this stuff. But, you know. And are you sometimes saying, it's just not enough, you, though. I mean, Elon Musk is, is restricted in a lot of ways through, you know, the world and its beliefs and, and rules and such, which are horribly being twisted right now, too. Like even all the all the transgender and all the sexual equality stuff in school, that's all sex slavery related. The the transgender idea, it's it's not like these people aren't bad people. There's nothing, you know, there tons of them are drugged and psychologically twisted in this way through empathetic understandings. I mean, again, they'll choose certain people. People with high amounts of empathy are people who have potential for high levels of intelligence if they understand their empathy properly. To twist a person's mind against their gender and then have them mutilate their bodies is literally, it's, a, it's an occultist slaver humiliation. To, like it's their beliefs, like whether or not the transgender people believe in that, this is what these slavers think. This is what they believe. This is why they're doing it to children, why they're doing it and they're targeting children specifically, and it's sex-related because they are trying to indoctrinate these people into some sort of slavery, or at least humiliations to make them kill themselves. Yeah, like, it's just, it's insane. It's disgusting, and you should never, and that's not to say either that, you know, if a person is an adult and they're fully formed, and they make the decision that they want to go through a surgery that is very risky and has a lot of bad, you know, uh, effects, just in any sense. Because, again, the sexual organs, they produce, like, they're, <laughs> you know what I mean? They produce certain things that allow your body to be in a balance. When you remove them or you mutilate them or damage them, especially even just the nerves, I mean, it, it destroys the ability to have pleasurable sex, or at least to the extent that you would with a healthy organ, and not one that was cut open and mutilated. And then, you know what I mean? There's all types of nerve damage and stuff. There's all types. It, it, it does not work the way that they want it to. It just doesn't. And it's risky and it's dangerous and, it, and it's destroying a person. It's destroying them psychologically, physically. It's, and it's just not a good thing. And again, it's not to say that these people are bad people because they're not bad people. They're just manipulated, you know? But it's like, I don't know. That's a great point. Even about like the pornography and stuff, like so many people don't realize that what they're watching a lot of times on these porn hub sites and these different, you know, things that they're getting for free is they're watching somebody that was trafficked and they're being raped. Like it's not- yeah this like consensual thing like they're getting off on like watching violence and they don't even consciously comprehend that 
Yeah, well, well, even more, even more disturbing is that even if a lot of these women are making the choice to be there, more than likely they were abused beforehand. Almost, you know, definitely. so I mean, these yeah. these ideologies they come from somewhere, and it's just, you know, and it's not to say that sex is bad either. Sex is supposed to be a beautiful thing. It's supposed to be a unity of love, connection, cooperation. You know, it's it's it's. But it's gotten like cut off of that. It's not with unity and love and and connection. Like it's the complete opposite almost. Yeah, it's it's all about dominance and all this stupid mentality, which is literally slaver mentality, slaver ideology. There should not be dominance in a sexual relationship. And that's not to say, that's not to say that if say one person wants to be submissive and the other one wants to be dominant in the sexual relationship, but that should be a choice made between the two. You know what I mean? Not something forced. It's like, you know, because there are mind states involved with these things that heighten or lower things. I mean, it's perception does a lot of things when it comes to sex. You know what I mean? It's a dangerous thing. It's natural to the brain. It's intrinsic. Everyone is susceptible. Everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, you're susceptible because it's natural to your brain, which means it should be understood. It should be controlled. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an addiction that can easily get out of control because it's natural to your brain. Your brain produces it. <laughs> you know, it's it's a finicky thing. That's why it should be treaded upon carefully rather than so fra- flagrantly you know thrown about but you know not only that but oddly enough people who can actually achieve proper energetic connections and cooperations between each other proper love connections unity connections actually create a very pleasurable euphoric effect that goes beyond what cheap sex could ever get you because it lasts longer the reason why it lasts longer is because you have this unity with this person who stays with you, who, you know, like it's, it's, there's chemical things that go on. It's like when you have cheap, useless sex, it, it's a short high. It's a short thrill that ends in depression because you don't have any actual connection with this person. You know what I mean? So when you have an actual connection, an actual love connection through unity and cooperation and such, not one based in dominating the other one or forcing something, the the sexual euphoria that comes from it is long lasting. It, it makes you feel peace throughout the day. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's just like, I don't know, people just misunderstand all this shit because they're all indoctrinated into a pornography mindset you know it's just you know nobody really has a good uh contrast i guess you could say they're just all on the one side and they think it's like you know what i mean it's like no no love has just as impactful effects through sex as just flagrant stupid sex would so you know anybody who thinks that's a good idea like having multiple wives or something that kind of stupid crap doesn't it make sense anybody wants to have more than one wife it's like what are you like what are you even doing like <laughs> i know <laughs> what the hell? on the same page <laughs> You know, I've seen I've seen examples of people that have like forty wives. What the hell is that? It doesn't even make sense. You don't even know half these people. Like, <laughs> what, the, what the hell is going on? Not only that, then you're having kids with all of them. Well, that's a big mess with genetic code. Now you got this. You're just creating genetic chaos all over the place. <laughs> Okay. And it's just like these people are idiots. They're <laughs> you know, I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> well, it's, it's 
I'm with it's you though. True. I don't get it either. I don't get it either. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It drives me crazy because they're always defending it. These people are always defending their stupidity like like it's a fucking badge of honor. And it's just like, my God, you're so stupid. Of course you'd be proud about your stupidity. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's just the most arrogant people are always proud about how dumb they are. Ignorance is bliss, yeah. right? That's why that, that saying exists. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. <laughs> uh, I got a bit of a sense of humor, I guess. <laughs> well, you have to sometimes, you know. I know there's there's been people that have watched my podcast and they're like, how does the guest like I am appalled that this guest is laughing while they're talking? And it's like, first of all, do you understand trauma responses? Like, for one, that's that's what that is, but for two, like what else can we do? Like, we can't just sulk forever. Like you have, not that this stuff is funny. I'm not saying that, but like, yeah, I try to like find joy in life and like happiness and love and connection and all these beautiful things that you said, like that requires laughter too. You know, like we have to try to rise above, like you said, perceptions. We have to like evolve our perceptions to like grow through all this trauma that we're all facing on micro and macro levels, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, I, it's something that needs to be faced directly and not ignored. That's for sure. Like, you know, I don't know. Because the more we ignore this problem, the worse it's going to get. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse until the whole society is falling apart and it might form into something else. But who's to say if that's going to be better than it was be what it was before? You know, it's just like people they you can't run from this problem there's nowhere to run the only option is to face it or fail and as far as i'm concerned taking the risk of facing it is the possibility of success but doing nothing is the guaranteed failure so it's it's one of the two basically you want to do this or you want to do that you want to you want to thrive or do you want to fail and as much as we want to sit around here and sulk, like you said, about how bad and horrible all these things are, which they are bad and horrible, yeah. it's not solving the problem. You know what I mean? People have to stand up. They have to unite. They have to communicate. They have to realize these truths. They have to network with trust, <laughs> create networks of trust and health and hold the country together and start start villainizing the right people the people who are and, and arrest them for god's sakes do something like if you're not gonna like you know i mean half these people in power i i don't even understand why anyone falls follows them other than the fact that these people are doling out the money <laughs> you know what i mean just throwing money at the problem because that's basically what they have money and drugs you know but a lot of the people who are carrying out these acts, I don't even think they really even care. You know, they're just doing it because they're getting money. And I'm just like, I'm like, when are you people going to realize the money doesn't mean anything? It's just a, <laughs> like, it's, ugh, there's so many better ways of doing things. And that's not to say you should just get rid of money or the idea of money. But the way that money is used and the way that it's incorporated into our economic system is just asinine because it's way too easily manipulated it's, it's like there's just so many reasons why there's there's so many problems with our economic system but i don't know i don't really want to get into that but <laughs> yeah i know you're true or people hoarding it like you said you know yeah yeah just like a dragon sitting on a pile of gold, but what the hell does that do for anyone? Just, just nothing. Go. Just nothing. There you go. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know. What else about your story did you want to share today? Was there anything else, or did we get through all the things that you that you personally wanted to share? Um, I have no idea. I don't know. There's always more to say, but maybe I've said enough. I don't know. At least at this point. 
I think you're so courageous. Like, I love your boldness. I love your raw honesty. I love how you speak from your heart. I love how you don't sugarcoat stuff, you know, and whether people love you or hate you for what you think, like, I think that that's just really badass. And like, we really, like, I think we need more of that. So many people are really weak on their convictions. Like they don't know what they stand for. They're afraid to yeah. talk about it. And that's a problem. I get a lot of people that reach out to me and they're like, Hey, I watch your podcast. And like, I know that all this is happening. But I'm too like I'm too nervous to do anything. I don't want people to to think anything of me or like I don't want my my employers to find out that like I'm talking about this. And I'm just like, yeah. What would you do if it was your kid? Like you would be on the streets like screaming this. Well, that's stuff. what you but know, because that's it's like kind of not just, directly you know. close to you. Like you're too scared to like do something about it. It's just really bizarre to me, you know. But like yeah. I love how you're like the opposite. You're just like. If it's wrong, like I'm going to call it out. If it's right, I'm going to call it out. If it deserves my support, I'm all there. If I need to fight against it, like I'm on the battlefield, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what's kind of funny about it too, is that they can't really, uh... <laughs> I don't know. My 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 past and all my official information is is so inconflicting with who I actually am that they can't even really like you know it's it's they kind of screwed themselves by making me so special and and you know, doing all this weird crap specifically with me because it, it really made like everything about my official records is very suspicious <laughs> it's just just very very suspicious stuff and they can't so, you know, I'm being bold and I am like, honestly, it's dangerous. I mean, I, I was threatened for sure. They definitely told me they're going to kill me and all this crap. It's like, screw them. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather stand up for what's right than be a cowardly slave, basically, that has no choice in my life and can't do anything. And, you know, and not only that, but everybody else who's in the same positions, I just... You know, people should just, uh, yeah, they should do something. And, and and the crazy thing about it, too, is that the more people who stand up and fight against this kind of stuff, the faster these things will be dealt with. You know what I mean? They People can unite. It's, just, it's all the silence and the secrets that these slavers push, and that's why things are so, because that's another part of their ideology is keeping everything secret. But, you know, I don't know. Well, you are welcome. Yeah. Go ahead. No, sorry. You're okay. Go ahead. Yeah, people definitely should be standing up more and trying to find more people that are against it as well. Just networking. And, and there are always dangers. Like, they're, sometimes it can be hard to tell if somebody is with you or against you but usually there's a lot of egotistical traits associated with anybody who's saying this to me. even if they're being friendly you know what i mean because some egotistical traits are linked in being empathetic but it's usually for the purpose of manipulation so it's a difficult situation it's hard to know who is your friend or your foe sometimes it's obvious but when it comes down to certain certain pe certain people, it can be very hard to tell. But uh, yeah. Well, all of this, like, this is really mind blowing stuff, and I would love for you to come back on again sometime. Um, I'm sure that there's like a lot more that you could talk about. I know you haven't remembered everything yet, you know, and and I think it's important that we understand this from all different perspectives. You know, I've noticed in this movement. Um, there's no lack of women standing up and I'm finding that more and more men are coming forward and speaking, but in comparison, there's not many, but I'm seeing like slowly more and more coming up, like the, the age that's waking up to what they went through is getting younger and younger in a lot of cases, you know, like yeah. I wasn't heard of that. Somebody your age was recalling memories and, and facing this stuff at such a young age, you know, a couple of decades ago, like I know a lot of most of the people that I've met that have faced this are between like 50 and 70 years old was like when they got their memories. 
you know, and, yeah. and that began healing from it. And you're, you're a lot older then and have, you know, so much longer that you've had, uh, or I should say so much less time that you've had to heal, you know? So I think it's amazing. I think it, you're really courageous for, for doing this. And I appreciate you coming forward and sharing, um, and especially helping us understand sort of what your generation has gone through, you know, in, in some of these programs, I know you can't speak on behalf of everybody, but I mean, if they're, if they're seeking to, you know, make things faster, make people stronger, you know, find different ways to help somebody become more intelligent, you know, like we all need to be aware of what's advancing technology wise and the ways that they're advancing the, this occultic, you know, old knowledge. Um, so that way we know, we know how it exists today, you know, and, and again, studying history and realizing that this has been, this has been your way longer than us. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. Like, this is all very, very old stuff. So I really appreciate you like helping, helping share that and like remind us of that. And then also giving us like this insight of what you experience personally and speaking from a male perspective, you know, I really hope met a lot other men see you doing this and like get inspired and be like, why the hell, you know, Matthew's speaking up, like, what's my excuse? <laughs> like I need to go up there and do something too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I said, sadly enough, the reason why a lot of men probably aren't coming forward as much as they might be ones responsible, sadly enough, but uh, there are women slavers too. Yes. Uh, yeah. But it's, yeah, you know, hopefully, hopefully more people will do the right thing and actually start talking about this stuff and pushing for some change that's you know, a hell of a lot better than uh, giving in to slavery. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so share, where can people support you? Because you're on a couple different platforms. Um, let people know like where they can connect with you and reach out to you and uh, and anything that you're doing online. Uh, well, for now, I suppose TikTok would be the place. Um, I do have some other apps, but I just, I, you know, I honestly, I, I was kept away from social media almost my whole life. Again, another isolation thing. So I've never even really been on, uh, I've never really even been on, uh, on social media pretty much my whole life. Honestly, I've only had a few cell phones my whole life, even jeez. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> But uh, I'm on I'm on TikTok mainly, or not TikTok. I mean X. X is where you would get me, not TikTok. Sorry, but I'm on TikTok and X mainly. But and if I'm you want to talk to me, I'm on X, and I'm totally fine to talking to anybody. Anybody has questions or they just want to talk to me or whatever, that's totally fine. And you can find him under his name Matthew Murray. It's with one T instead of two, but his handle yeah. is Misto Callisto M Y S T. C-A-L-L-I-S-T-O. Um, I'll have that. I have a lot of names, I guess you could say. <laughs> I love it. It's creative. <laughs> yeah. And then on TikTok, TikTok, it's Matthew Murray 80. And that's Murray with an A-Y, not an E-Y. And then one T in the in his name, Matthew. Um, and I will yeah. have his TikTok also. And, and talk a little bit about your poetry too. Ah, there's just some of them are really complex others are a little more simple but they're just they're just to uh, make people think about stuff <laughs> i mean some of this stuff is linked to this is i guess this is another thing i could touch on that's related to the psychic soldier type stuff um it has to do with in a sense being able to communicate with the dead but it's uh, it's not really what people would think. See, when this has to do with quantum physics and time and stuff like this, and consciousness and space and time. Because when it comes down to it, I mean, time is just, it's not, I mean, it's the measurement of something, but it isn't really real. So, I mean, like, and obviously the past existed. So there's certain things like when a person dies, does that mean everything they were is just gone or are there connections 
to say like the gray fox where if you could empathize essentially with a dead person or a mind of a dead person find their specific conscious code you could say then you can tap into old perceptions essentially and you can kind of speak with the dead as they can give you ideas and there's interesting things about it like there's people who would say like there's religious ideas behind it a lot of them you know well like catholic people in particular old religious teachings teach people to be afraid of these these are again linked to I mean, like back in the day, like the Salem witch trials, for example, this was linked to children, typically women, oddly enough, who had weak psychic abilities and people take notice of and kill them because they thought they were possessed by demons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because they'd be speaking words that people they knew were dead had spoken in exactly the same ways, like literally to the point where the words are exactly the same. Even the tone of voice would be <laughs> basically exactly the same. Very weird things like that. But uh, so, I don't know, I lost my train of thought there. Why did I bring that up? Um, psychic super soldiers. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I guess, I don't know. So you can essentially kind of communicate with dead people in a sense. But it's it's an empathetic connection like essentially the brain that existed in the past at one time was projecting thought patterns you could say and these thought patterns go beyond space and time so even though the person's dead the thought patterns project into the future and they're linked to consciousness in a sense so if you can make a proper empathetic connection you can tap into things like that, get insight into stuff. It's not an easy thing to do. And it's also not, it's not like people would think where they would think they would, you know, get into this person's mind and get exact specific information or details about that time or something like that. It's more just um, an empathetic conscious connection of feeling in a sense. Uh, so you get understandings, you get, you get basically being like, feeling what a dead person felt if you know what i mean but it's i don't know it's interesting it's not exactly what people would think it is it's less so but you can definitely do some interesting stuff like i said when i was a kid i used to do this kind of stuff all the time some of the stuff i would say to people would be stuff that dead people they knew had said and that's why it was so, and it was, there's no way I could have known them. And that's why they would think about these things and they'd be like, hmm, well, that's weird. You know, they'd make, and, and that's the other weird thing about it is I would be saying these specific things to this specific people that would understand it, which is even more weird if you think about it, right? It's just like, I don't know, this is weird, weird stuff. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, sorry. No worries. Yeah, it's it's My, really fascinating, yeah. like the things that we're not taught about our own biology and psychology, you know, in our bodies. And that's been so valuable, like learning that through survivors who do have such a deeper understanding of what our bodies are capable of doing on, you know, both ends of the spectrum from like high performing, you know, and intelligence to, you know, what being broke, like when you reach the point of death or being broken down so severely, like how trauma affects our body too, you know? So yeah. I appreciate you like shining a light on a lot of this stuff. Cause you know, not a lot of people have, have the courage to talk about it, you know? So thank you for coming on and for sharing all of this today, Matthew. No problem. Thank you for letting me. <laughs> Absolutely. You're welcome on any time. You're a wealth of knowledge and it's fascinating learning from you. And, you know, again, you're so young. I think it's inspiring that you're already out there speaking up, you're putting pieces together and now you're trying to give your own piece of the puzzle to others and, and, you know, let it fit into their story or, or allow them to, you know, plug it in and make sense of the world even more. So what you're doing is really important. 
you know, I'm, I'm so sorry for what you went through and that you had to go through all of that to learn all of this. And I'm really excited to see, you know, what you keep doing with, with all of this knowledge that you have and the ways that you keep impacting the world and helping people understand, you know, I feel like you're, you're just dipping your toe in, you know, the, the water <laughs> of, of what you're going to do, you know, and just know that like, we have your back, I have your back and we have your back. The community does, you know, we have our eyes on you. Um, and everybody, I'm going to have Matthew's Twitter or X, whatever you guys want to call it. I still can't call it X yet. I, I call it Twitter. I'm just like, X just sounds so weird. <laughs> and then TikTok, I'm going to have all of that information below. They're just hyperlinks. You guys can just go ahead and click, go support. It's so good to have our eyes on survivors and to, you know, let any opposition, uh, know that we're watching them and uh, if they try any funny business, like we have their back, you know, uh, I said in one episode, survivors have an army against them and they don't have one behind them. And like, we have to change that, you know, we have to, we have to go after the people coming up against them, realize that that's the only divisive party that we should all have is child protectors and child perpetrators. Like that's the only dividing line that should exist in the world. Honestly, you know, we need to come together and like, and go after the real enemy. And it, it, trust me, it's not Democrat and Republic and it's not black versus white. Like it's literally yeah. an a battle between everybody that supports children and wants to protect them and then people that want to exploit and uh, abuse them you know so we all need to come together around these amazing warriors coming forth like matthew to share their insight and knowledge that they learned that that we shouldn't know you know it's the stuff that has been hidden for generations and generations so please go support him and matthew just thank you again for coming on i really appreciate it and hope that you come on again yes definitely i would Love to speak more on this. So, I have thank a you too that, that, you're gonna, that you're going to. I have a, a feeling in my gut that, that that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Well, I'm definitely going to try as best I can. I mean, I don't know. Who knows what the future holds, but we'll see anyways. And take yeah. my time. <laughs> don't yeah. rush things too much. One step but, yeah. up, 100%. And you guys, thank you so much for listening. We couldn't do this without you. Your support means the world to us. I'll have my all my stuff in the show notes to you. Keep in touch. I, I I know you guys are on every single platform. I don't expect you to be. I don't even like like doing it myself, but I don't know what platforms are going to kick me off. So I just try to be on all of them. Um, And I would encourage you guys to do the same, even if you don't use them. Like, get them just to keep in touch with creators Um, just in case something happens on your main platform. So connect with me wherever you guys can. I love you guys so much. This is, uh, this show has been what it is because of all of you. I can't express enough gratitude. Thank you for caring about all the guests and the show for me, for, for all of it. You know, we couldn't do it without you. So you guys, God bless you. Thank you again for tuning in and we will see you next time.